never knows how you come across somebody once in a while you, you shouldn't have messed with. That's me. Well, I'm back down. I am not an African American. You're Oreo cookie. White on the inside and black on the outside. I don't have an afro. I have an Amerifro. Talking that idiotic stuff you talk about, I will slap you. Go ahead. Make my day. Black at the ace of spades, but 100, 100% American. Heard around the world by everybody and their mama. The Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing him with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Good morning. Welcome to the third hour of the show today. Uh, Mark Stein is with me, writer from Stern, writer from Slate. And he wrote Sander Bland, right to film arrest. Mark, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you for having me on. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so I write about legal issues for Slate magazine, um, and uh, I wrote a piece about why Sandra Bland, who was arrested in Texas, uh, absolutely had the right to record her arrest on her cell phone. Oh, and, and I don't think anyone is saying that she doesn't, didn't have a right to do that. The problem is that when she was stopped by the police officer, as many black people do today, she did not respect authority and follow instructions. She started going off and acting like a hissy, and that's why she ended up in the situation she did. Was she right to act that way with the police officer? Um, you know, the, the, there's a tricky question here because obviously when you're interacting with a police officer, uh, they hold the power. They have the gun, they have the taser. Um, and so Sandra Bland was clearly very irritated. And when she uh, talked to the officer, she didn't accord him the kind of respect that officers are usually used to receiving. But I'm going to push back. I don't think that she really uh, threw any kind of hissy fit. I think she was just uh, alarmed and irritated that she was pulled over for uh, such an extremely minor offense, which was failing to signal when turning, and further that uh, she seemed to have been forced into that situation by the police officer who was following her. Uh, he had been sort of uh, trailing her for several miles, it seems, and she moved over only to allow him to speed up and move past her, and it was at that point that he pulled her over. So again, it's certainly smart for everyone out there to accord uh, you know, true respect to officers when you're pulled over just out of a pragmatic concern for your own safety. But I do think that Bland was within her rights to push back against the officer's assertion that she, that she had committed an illegal act. So I want to ask again, was she right, yes or no, to go off on the police officer rather than just following his instructions? Was she right to do that? As a practical matter, no. She okay. was not right to do that because she and doesn't so did have a she, gun or a So did she get what she deserved by the officer having to make her follow instructions? Because no, she absolutely was, not. She was because refusing to follow instructions, so he had no other choice because he didn't know if she had a gun in her car or what was going to happen next. She got what she deserved from the officer. Do you agree with that? I don't think that's right um, because we all have still a free speech right when we're interacting with officers to assert our own opinion. But, um, but she, and she went beyond that, and no one asked her opinion anyway. She was supposed to follow instructions, and she probably would have been on her way because he was only going to give her a warning and not even a ticket. Well, I don't know if that's right, because if you watch the video, it's really he who first uses physical force against her. Uh, she simply asserts that she's irritated that he's been pulled over, uh, that she has been pulled over, and then he sort of goads her, pushes her to uh, get out of the car, asks her, are you nervous, are you agitated, and then reaches into the car and starts using what I think we would all agree is excessive force. He points his teeth at her. I disagree with that, by the way. Oh, well, he points his taser at her and screams, I will light you up. I mean, so I'm not, I'm not really sure if that's a reasonable response to a woman who's expressing sort of low-level agitation at being pulled over. Well, that was anything but low-level. She's going off, yelling and screaming and carrying on. Everything he asked her to do, she was refusing to do it. 
even when he asked her to get out of the car, she refused to get out. So he had no other choice but to use a, uh, authority in order to deal with a black female who was disobeying the officer. And I think that anyone who refuses to see that and admit to that truth has a hidden agenda. What is yours? Uh, my hidden agenda is that I think that police officers are bound by the confines of the Fourth Amendment, uh, which bars uh, unreasonable searches and seizures. And pulling someone over on the road is definitely a seizure of the person. Uh, and so having seized Sandra Bland like that, he, the officer needed to further justify why he was detaining her, and I don't think that justification was there. She was acting suspiciously agitated toward him, sir. You are a police officer. You're stopping a person simply really because they didn't flash their lights while changing lanes. You walk over to the car, and this person started to act like an idiot for no reason at all. This, uh, she could have been mentally ill, and apparently she had some mental problems because she had tried to commit suicide prior to that day, according to the report. She could have been mentally ill. She could have been a criminal on the run. She could have had a weapon in her car. He handled that situation in a proper way. She was 100% wrong. Do you blame the officer for her death? No, I don't blame the officer for her death. Who do you blame uh, for that? I blame no one. Uh, suicide is tragic. Suicide cannot be blamed on any one person. And all you the don't facts. blame Sandra? She the one did it. You don't blame oh. her? Well, when someone commits suicide, it's always out of some kind of deep mental illness, and I think it's wrong to try to find culpability within a mental illness. But she's still responsible. Just because she was weak, a weak person, couldn't deal with life and wanted to kill herself, that doesn't excuse the lack of responsibility and take her life. She was a weak woman, didn't know how to deal with the issues of life. She took her own life. No one else is responsible but her. But her. Well, do do we blame depression on depressed people, or yes. do we blame depression as a mental illness? No, I do blame it on depressed people, because if they knew how to deal with life, they wouldn't be depressed. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure the science bears you out on that, but we're all entitled to our opinion. 888-775-3773. Jesse Mark Joseph Stern is with me. Back in a moment. We're talking about Sandra Bland, a black woman there who was stopped by a police officer in Texas uh, for changing lane without sitting, uh, turning her signal light on. And when the officer stopped her, the woman had a hissy fit like most black women do. And, and many black men in today's America, they're angry and out of control. So she just had a fit. Uh, the officer had to drag her oh, insisted that she get out of her car because she was refusing to at one point. So he finally got the job done. She ended up in jail. And while there, it is being reported that she committed suicide. Isn't that amazing? And it has been reported that she had uh, tried to commit suicide before going to jail, a, a, period, a period prior to that. Um, Mark Joseph. Stern is with me, a writer from Slate magazine, and he asked the question, does did Sandra Bland have a right to film herself, film her arrest? Uh, also, I don't know if they had a funeral over the weekend. It was a shameful act of uh, politics, really, at her funeral. Um, Mark, and I'm Skyping with Mark right now. I'm looking at you, Mark. I can see you, buddy. Uh, I wish I could see you. <laughs> you said that, uh, Sandra, it was mental illness that caused, caused Sandra to take her own life. It wasn't her fault. A am I right about that? Uh, yes, I think that as a sort of medical matter, it's generally agreed upon that when people commit suicide, it's due to an underlying illness, uh, that it's sort of, uh, it's irresponsible to assign blame to an individual uh, for committing suicide. But you have to admit that people who commit suicide are weak people who were not able to deal with life issues, right? 
Well, I wouldn't admit that because there's a lot of evidence that depression is hereditary uh, and that depression is something that some people are born with um, and that some people are predisposed to experience. And so those of us who don't face depression are lucky in that sense, but those of us who do face depression shouldn't be blamed simply because they were born with uh, a certain her you know, hereditary structure that led them to be predisposed to suicide. So then you would agree that homosexuals who commit suicide do so uh, because they are mentally ill, not due to bullying then? Well, uh, as uh -huh. a myself, I can say that you say uh, what? there are often many factors that go into uh, the suicide of LGBT youth. Uh, and youth suicide is often a somewhat different phenomenon from adult suicide. You make a very interesting point. Uh, and when L young people tend to be very much uh, less in control of their own emotions, less in control of their own actions and thoughts, their brains are very plastic, they're still developing. Um, so I would certainly say that it's a different, it's a different question when LGBT youth commit suicide. Um, um, but that still, there's often a lot of depression uh, and a lot of mental illness that's going into the decision to take one's own life in any circumstance. Well, you said a lot, and I'm black and slow, and I didn't get it all. So I need, <laughs> I need a simple answer here. So you are agreeing that homosexuals who commit suicide are doing it due to mental illness and not bullying. I would say that they're yes doing no. it due to depression. Give me a yes or no first. The answer is no. Uh, because your question oversimplifies the matter. They're doing it due to depression, and depression can be triggered by a number of factors, and one of them can be unrelenting bullying, which is what a lot of gay youth face. But depression is not a mental illness. Depression is due to a lack of dealing with, or let's put it this way, depression is due to an overreaction to a situation becoming angry about that situation and just weakening you in life. Well, I don't, I don't think that's quite right because there are a lot of women, for instance, who face uh, depression after childbirth. It's called postpartum depression. And they are and angry, they're, though. They're all, they're, they're angry. That's why they become depressed. I, I don't think they're angry. I think that it's a chemical imbalance that results from pregnancy and childbirth. Um, and after giving birth to a child, there's a chemical imbalance in their brain. And that that's leads ridiculous. to a kind of depression. That's, that's ridiculous. That's, well, I think it's ridiculous to say that all mothers who face depression are angry. I, I don't think that you can blame it on one simple factor like anger. I think that's an oversimplified view of the world. But simplicity is the, is, um, the healing or the medicine for a good life. It, it may be for many, um, but for some people, uh, getting to the deeper root of the issue rather than a simplified... But that summary. is a deeper root. Only blind people think that Everything that people, or most things that people go to is due to an illness. It's a disease. Only blind people think that. People of common sense know that it's an overreaction to life issues, like homosexuality, for example. This crazy woman is now dead, uh, Sandra Bland. Sandra Bland apparently had issues in her life that she was not capable of dealing with, so she walked around in life an angry, out-of-control woman and you see what it got her. Now, it's very hard to psychoanalyze a woman who's dead, um, but it's not hard to examine the footage that we have of the events that preceded her death and look at what she did right and wrong in that instance. Now, you said that no one is arguing about whether uh, Sandra Bland had a right to record her arrest. That's not quite right. In fact, the police officer who arrested her forced her to stop recording her arrest, uh, to turn her phone off so that she could not record the moment of her arrest, in fact, that the officer subdued her and allegedly cracked her head against the ground. Now, I have to wonder, why was it so important to the officer that this woman stopped recording him while he eventually acted violently toward her in order to get her in handcuffs? Because um, when you, when officers are dealing with a person, they don't know the history of the person. They don't know what they can do. So you're going to have to follow the instructions from the officer. You can't be holding a phone in your hand, hand trying to videotape your arrest when you need to have both hands behind your back and handcuffed for the protection of the officer and the person that's being dealt with. 
uh, then why was she not permitted to even continue the audio recording? Why was she forced to actually turn her phone off rather than simply uh, continue recording while she went through her arrest? Maybe because the person is under arrest. And once you do that, you don't have rights like that. You do, you do have rights once you're under arrest, though. A number of people are arrested not to, wrongly. Not to have, a, to have a cell phone in your hand or be recording what's going on, man. Well, I think we'll just have to disagree on that because uh, there are, have been throughout history many, many, many false arrests, wrongful arrests. And uh, history has suggested that the more information that you can uh, track about these arrests, the more uh, likely it is that the wrongly arrested person will be able to vindicate her rights in court later. Do you think the officer was racist for dealing with Sandra in a strong manner? I can't know that, and so I cannot say yes to that question. Oh, okay. I don't know his heart, so well, I cannot analyze from what I know, which is very little, whether or not he was racist. I only know that he overreacted to the situation uh, and may have acted with excessive force in subduing her. How do you feel about, or what do you say about white people who are being raped, murdered, robbed, beaten up, uh, knocked, out, knocked out in the so-called knockout games? And by black people, and you barely hear anything about it. It rarely does the story become go national. It makes national news. Do you feel that that is that? First of all, do you feel that that's right for white people to be under attack by black people, and uh, and the headlines never make national news? Well, I would say there's an immense amount of white on white crime. No, and that's not the question. I was talking about black on white. Uh, black on white crime is not any more problematic than white on white crime. Not or white true. On black crime. But not, the, I'm, the most terrible massacres in our recent history were committed by white people. You evaded and, the question that I just asked, and I'm looking uh, at you, and I'm feeling a little bad for you. Uh, the answer, the answer to your question <laughs> is no. I'm not concerned about black on white crime. Why any not? more so than I'm concerned about white on black crime or white on white crime. I think using race is a distracting factor in the root of crime, which tends often to be poverty and education. No. Mark, how can people get to your website, read your writings, and follow what you're doing? Uh, they can uh, really just Google my name if they want, Mark Joseph Stern, or they can follow me on Twitter at MJS underscore DC. Why is it that uh, black on black crime is happening, I mean, just all over the country in numbers every day? Black races are attacking white people on a daily basis. You hear nothing from the liberal uh, uh, blacks and whites in our country, but when it's white on black police officers or white people, period, on blacks, that's when you guys come out of the woodwork. Why is that? Well, here's, here's uh, by way of a response, a statistic from the FBI is that 83% of white victims in 2013 were killed by white offenders. Uh, so only uh, a very, very small percentage of white victims were injured by minority offenders. Um, and so, like I said earlier, I think that your focus on black on black crime is really a distraction from broader problems of crime in the United States. Um, now, I think that there certainly can be uh, black on white crime. It does happen just as there's white on black crime. But focusing on race when discussing crime is really, like I, just, like I said, a true distraction from root out the problems of crime like like bad education which you yourself are hoping to solve with your school which is a wonderful cause uh, mm -hmm. under education and poverty can breed crime respond to this um, the white population is 197 million um, uh, is five times the size of the black population 39 million white on white 479,034 victim rate at 243 per 100,000. Black on black, 140.142, uh, you know, 140,142 victim rate, 359 per 100,000. Murder in 2011, known cases, FBI, white on black, 193 black, on white, 448. Uh, white on white, 2,630. Victim rate, 
1.34 per 100,000 for reported cases. Black on black, 2,447. Victim rate, 6.27 per 100,000 for reported cases. Uh, how do you explain all that? So I would say that uh, presuming those statistics are accurate, just like presuming F my statistics FBI, were accurate. FBI, FBI. Right. Where so did you get yours from? I got mine from the FBI as well. Okay. So we're both on the same page here. All right. Uh, we're both on the same page. Uh, it's certainly true that um, because in large part of the historic discrimination that black people have faced reaching back oh, from man. slavery through segregation, through redlining and housing, uh, which often continues covertly, uh, <laughs> black people face often higher poverty rates. You should be ashamed. Mark, stop it. Do you believe blacks can be racist as well? Of course, everyone can be racist. And so do you believe then it is possible that blacks are killing, raping, uh, beating up, robbing white people because of their color? It's possible, but, but very uncommon. Oh, uh, no, not true, buddy. It's certainly very common that white people continue to uh, beat and kill black people. Not common. It's not States common. Before. More black, more whites are getting, I just read it to you, more blacks are getting beat up and killed by whites. I mean, more whites Sorry, are getting- Sorry, I think you, your connection dropped. More whites are getting killed or beat up by blacks than blacks are by whites. I just okay, re read my, the report my, to you. I suppose my broader question is, um, <clears throat> what do you propose as a solution to this problem that you see? Yeah. I mean, you, you clearly perceive a problem and you're harping on it, but what do you see as the solution as a practical way out of this problem? We should point out black racism in the same manner we point out those small incidents of white racism on black people. We should uh, punish black people as we would white people for committing racial or hateful racist crimes against white people and stop blaming it on slavery and all that crap, but call it what it is in the same manner we do when white people carry out the same type of acts for the same reasons. And, and that's, your, that's your solution, is to uh, call out and punish black people when they uh, commit hate crimes against white people for being white. Isn't that what you do to white people when they Certainly. do it to black? Yes. That's and what... I'd endorse that. But I also think but, that that's but... not a really holistic solution. And it doesn't seem likely to me to wipe out the problem of crime that we have in the United States. Because like I said earlier, race used in crime is often a distraction. And simply punishing black people for committing hate crimes against white people when they do is not going to get to the bottom of why crime occurs in America. Okay, so what would you want to do? How would you want to, what is your solution for blacks who have committed racist crimes? Well, once again, any racist crime should be punished and racist crime should generally be published as hate crimes, undoubtedly. So uh, even if it's blacks doing it to whites, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, and, and uh, white people can commit hate crimes against white people. It's certainly possible. Um, a hate crime is a hate crime. Um, <clears throat> but I think that education, like I said, you're very involved in education. I laud you for that. I think that uh, expanding, dramatically expanding education and resources for underprivileged black people, for underprivileged white people, for all poor people in this country is going to do a better job of rooting out crime than simply punishing uh, black criminals more vehemently. Why not get rid of the so-called... Um um, hate crime law or legislation, why not just get rid of that? Because all crime is hate crime. Well, there's certainly... And you said that, that it's a distraction, so why not get rid of that legislation? There's certainly an argument for that. Um, on the other hand, uh, hate crimes have been identified as a kind of crime that has an especially dramatic impact on communities um, rather than simply an individual act. And punishing a hate crime as a crime against one's identity, as an especially hateful crime, uh, may be better at helping communities overcome certain extremely gruesome crimes <laughs> rather than punishing a murder uh, as nothing more than an assault. What university did you go to? Uh, Georgetown. Oh, man. I'm so sorry because you look like a nice guy. They, they <laughs> you seem with, like a very nice guy, too, Jesse. They mess with you, man. They, they, got, they have you confused. Hey, Jesse, we disagree, but it doesn't mean we have to, you know, be angry about it, right? Uh, no, but I'm not angry. I just, you just seem like such a nice guy. You could be helpful if you have understanding about what was really going on. I appreciate that. I think yeah. it's often helpful for two competing viewpoints to sort of get together as we are now it and does. try to hash out the truth. Yeah, it does.
So your listeners may be very persuaded by what you're saying, but some of them might be persuaded by what I'm saying as well. You, you agree with me that crime and immorality causes poverty, not the other way around, right? Oh, uh, no, I don't. I don't agree with that at all. You don't? Uh, not in any way. No, why, no, no. Why no. not? I, because uh, the studies have shown that poverty, a lack of resources, a lack of education are often what leads to crime. Um, there are not people, who, generally, people are not born with some impulse but, to commit crime and then fall into poverty. Because but black people were poor when I was growing up. They didn't commit crime in the way that they are doing it now because they had a sense of moral character. Now that due to the lack of moral character, they're committing these crimes. Do you agree with me that a real short answer, there we go to the phones, that most, not all, not all, not all, but most black people are suffering not due to racism, but the lack of moral character? No, I don't, I don't agree with that at all. You don't? Is it more no. to have 73% of your babies out of wedlock? Uh, I would not assign morality to that either way, um, but I would say that uh, having children out of wedlock is uh, very closely tied to lack of education, lack of resources, and poverty. Uh, yeah. And all of those things, whether or not you think this is a valid criticism, all of those things have been largely perpetuated by uh, f racism, structural <laughs> racism in the United States. So for, what are black? Time. So are you saying that blacks are so mentally ill that if a white person don't like them, they're going to go have a baby out of wedlock? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm simply saying that it's easier for white people to get ahead in life than black people right oh, now. Oh, Jesus. Okay. So if they had, if they got married, uh, husbands and wives, fathers and mothers raised their children, taught them to be responsible, wouldn't they, wouldn't it be easy for them to get ahead in life as well? Uh, yes, although I think it would still be harder than a white person in the same position because of how much racism still exists in the United States. Um, but I do agree with you uh, that having children within marriage is often uh, beneficial to the child himself and that that should be a goal for many communities. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Let's go to the Bible Go To God of Los Angeles. Bible Go To God, you're all with Mark. And Mark, and Mark, your guest. Hi, Mark. Hi. So just cavalierly paint the majority of white people in this country is racist with his statement that, oh, if the black people are, are, are perfectly moral and raise their children right, they'll still have a tough time because of racism. So that's just point. that's painting the majority of white people who elect, who elected this black evil president, but black anyway, president, and they're all cheering about it. Now we're still racist. There is nothing white people can do not to be racist. Now, I want to speak about Africa for a second. Yeah, Africa, real fast. Yes, Africa admits themselves that it's because of their immorality and crime that they can't get foreign investment. They say that themselves. It's their own admission. Mark? Yes. Do you want to respond to that? Uh, I would say I don't think that the majority of white people are necessarily racist in this country, um, but I think that there is, for one thing, a lot of unconscious bias, uh, and for a second thing, I think that there are institutions which remain racist. Um, at least we've seen that uh, banks have been indicted for uh, racist and predatory lending schemes, which is one way that they could actively prevent black people from getting ahead. And so while that was I would all never lie. Say, I, would, I would never that say all that all, all black people are racist. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I would never say that all white people are racist. Uh, I would say that it would be foolish to pretend that racism doesn't exist in the United States When anymore. you say it is institutional, that is, because institutions are run by people, hello. They're not run by computers and machines. So when you say that, you are accusing the majority of white people of being racist. Because if someone like Jesse's uncle, well, you ought to meet Jesse's uncle, if, I mean nephew, if someone like Jesse's nephew can make things happen, in a godforsaken place like Gary, Indiana, with his morality and his strength of character, it, black people can 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 make it happen. They just need to quit blaming and start and start being men again, like Jesse's nephew. Let's get a quick reply. I, I need to run. Go ahead, uh, Mark. I I think I think that uh, uh, broadly, uh, your hope that. Uh, People in America, uh, you know, put their faith in morality and try to be courageous and try to uh, stand up for their own values is a great prescription for the country and one which I would completely agree with, uh, even if you and I don't agree on the specific details. Uh, let's go to Hampton, Virginia and talk to Rick. Rick, you're on with Mark. Go ahead. Mr. Mark, how are you doing this morning, Justin? Uh, hey, hey. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. You know, I like to say I am so sick and tired <laughs> of people saying that um, it's easy for whites 
than it is for black. You know why most time it's hard for black? Why? Because the attitude is so bad and they so ungodly. That's why. You ask them to do something small in the job, that ain't my job. The attitude <laughs> is so bad. That's why. I'm, I'm going to tell you for experience. I'm a black guy. I'm a heat and neck edition of guy by trade. Okay. And when you walk with the Lord, have a good attitude and love people, God uses anybody who he made to promote you. And if your attitude is good, I mean, you just, people, people off all kinds of help me increase in my career. Let's get a quick response from Mark. Uh, Rick, we're running out of time sure. here. Go ahead, Mark. Oh. Yes, I, I would say that uh, I appreciate as well uh, that you, you know, have put so much faith in, in America culture and American culture and American uh, systems of governance. And I completely agree that there are many people out there whose own moral failings may have actually led them uh, into a worse position in life. But again, I think that it's uh, sort of, uh, it's unwise to paint with such a broad brush. And I think that there are a lot of black people in the country and a lot of white people and a lot of other minorities who may be in a position of, uh, of being in poverty, um, of being undereducated uh, through no fault of their own. And I, that's just my own position. My last question, and, and uh, you have the last word. I grew up under the Jim Crow laws down in Alabama on a plantation. Blacks did better back then when it came to family, working hard, buying pro uh, property, uh, education. They did better then than they are today. How do you explain that? Um, well, Jesse, I would say that uh, certainly your own path in life toward the success you found now is inspirational. And though different people may follow different <laughs> paths, yours may be one for some to emulate. Mark, will you come back? Uh, absolutely. May I love having you on. You have a, a good spirit for it. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. You too, buddy. All right, let's go to Tony out of Tennessee. Tony, good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Peterson. How are you? I'm doing fine. How about you? All is well, sir. How can I help you? Well, I was calling in to kind of agree with the guest you had on not too long ago. Oh, I'm sorry. He's gone, but how did you, what did you want to agree with him about? When, uh, well, one of the things I wanted to agree with him about was about uh, the majority of these corporations that's in America are racist. Uh, and where's your proof? Oh, they just gave you the proof uh, a couple of days. Last week they gave you the proof when they call a list out of all the corporations that support the abortion of black babies. Uh, that includes the president, so Obama would be racist too then, right? Yes, sir. That w that's what we came to the conclusion that it doesn't mean about race or color. If you're uh, racist or not, you can be black or white and be racist. I understand. That is so true. I wish you had had a chance to speak with him, Tony. Yeah, I wish I, I, wish I would have too. I tried to get in, but you know, it's kind of hard just getting in. There's yeah, other people calling and stuff. Yeah, we'll have him back. We'll definitely have him back. He he said he will come back, and so we'll we'll definitely have him back, and we'll promote yeah. it because I didn't. James didn't know for sure that the guy was coming on. He had not. I think right, Jay. He had not responded that he would come on. James might be in the toilet. <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> You didn't know you didn't know for sure he was coming if he was coming on or not. That's why we didn't have a chance to promote it. Is that right? Okay, he didn't, he wasn't sure. He didn't get the contact. So next time we will know, we could promote it, and that way you'll get a chance to speak to him. Yeah, that way I'll get a chance to speak to him because I did want to tell him that because I seen that on the Glenn Beck uh, show. We called out the different name: Macy's, Pepsi, Coca Cola. Yeah. Oh man, the yeah. top, the top, the top places in the, in our country. Tony, they, they all. Uh, I am happy to know that a man like you is in Tennessee. And it's good to have good folks all over because we gotta, we gotta yes. stop all this stuff. Yeah, we gotta stop this stuff. Yeah. We can do it. We yes, can do sir. It with the power of God, with that, the power of God, we that, can do it. That's right. Call me again, buddy. I'm out of time. I appreciate your call. All right. Okay. Bless you, Mr. Peters. You too, buddy. All right, folks, I am out of time. I cannot take any more calls. Back tomorrow. Watch your backs. Have a good day. The Jesse Lee Peterson Show, produced by Bond, Brotherhood Organization of a New Destiny.